Video from Bloodhound Blog, Unchained in Phoenix, 2008. Brought to you by Zillow.com. Video courtesy of BrokerIPTV.com. Hello, everyone. I'm Mark. We're at. Let me try it too. Hello, everyone. I'm Mark. And we're at Bloodhound Blogs. Uh, something Bloodhound Blog Unchained. Unchained, with uh, Zillow being our sponsor. Uh huh. And I'm with. Russell Shaw. I love it. This is the way all interviews should sure, be conducted. Really should. The people who are doing interviews not like this, I hate to say it, they're doing them wrong. So Mark and I are doing it the right way. And for those of you who are in the interview business, pay careful attention. You can skip the content of what I'm saying. Just watch what Mark's doing. Okay? Go ahead. Excellent, Russell. Well, let's talk about, and, I, and you spoke about it briefly today, on listings and listing management. You're in a market here where, uh, in Phoenix, where I think a lot of agents out there would just think, that this would be the worst place to be, the worst time to be in business. But I think you've got a little different attitude on what to do, how to take listings, and what listings not to take. Well, I think it's actually the best time to be in business because this market actually favors people who know what they're doing, mm -hmm. and that's the big difference. When listings are easy to get, they're harder to sell. When listings are real hard to sell, they're easy to get. When they're real easy, when they're hard to get, they're easy right. to sell. That is always true. In this market, easy, listings are extremely easy to get. So they're by definition harder to sell because they're harder to price. But you have people every day in this market. We have, if I tell you right now, a business is up to where we're selling like close to 5,000 units a month with around 55,000 listings in the multiple listing system. That's up from about 3,000 sales with 55,000 listings in the listing system. What is the difference when you have agents every day taking listings that are never going to sell? Never sell. Never, never sell. They, they will never sell. The odds, most of the listings being put into the system are never going to sell at any time. It's not that their market time is going to be long. They're simply never going to sell, and there's no prayer of them selling. And what I say to agents is, like, think of something that you really, really, really like to do. And when you think of that, really, really do this. Think of something you really like to do. All right, I got it, I got it. And once you've got that thing, would you rather do that fun thing or take a listing that's never going to sell? They both pay the same. I mean, yeah, nothing. Funny. They take funny. nothing. They, they, they pay nothing. nothing. So you may as well have fun. Uh, and as opposed to taking a listing that's never going to sell. The only listings we want to take are the ones we honestly believe we can sell. And the rest of them we say no to. One of the false ideas that agents have is that the purpose of a listing appointment is to take the listing. And that's a false idea. The purpose of a listing appointment is to see if you want the listing and then can you take it. Right, exactly. And I know you use a lot of good quality pre-listing materials. Mm -hmm. So you've sort of already pre-sold yourself your ideas and concepts even before arriving yes. at the meeting. So they've already really got your interview. You're there now, too. Well, to somewhat interview them, but if you actually think about it, if you looked at the profile of almost every top agent in the United States, they would be a listing agent who either has a demographic farm or a geographic farm. They would almost always be listing agents. So that would be true for almost every top agent in the United States. Hmm. They would be agents who are listing agents, primarily listing-based, even if they sell, they go, well, half of our deals are buyers. But how did they get the buyer deals? From their listings, from marketing their right. listings. So they have operations that are still essentially listings-based. And it is not a complicated thing to price property what might be complicated is to insist on not taking the listing if it's not going to sell. Like if a property is worth 400 and the agent knows it, there's no good reason to take that listing at 500 because the seller feels like it or that's what they'd like to try. I mean, really, the, the issue is to go, no, I'm so sorry, I can't do that. And they go, well, we have someone else that'll list it. And go, okay. Right. Less, it's sometimes it's best to be the third call. Well, um, I don't know. Sometimes you don't get to be up to bed in this market here, since you know it's not going to sell for the five, to just walk away from it. Uh, but not, we're not trying to have a combative relationship with a client or a potential client. We just tell them the truth. Yeah, just a realistic approach to buying and selling and working with sellers. Yeah. 
And for those of you in the viewing audience at home, I want you again, I emphasize what a great job Mark did in asking me these questions. And also for those of you who are in the real estate business, I think you should really look and go, darn, that Russell Shaw really answered those questions on taking listings pretty good too. He's the best, isn't he? Hey, Russell, thank you very much. And we appreciate you being here with Broker IPTV. It's a pleasure, sir. You've been watching video from the Bloodhound blog, Unchained in Phoenix, brought to you by Zillow.com. For more information and interviews, check out BrokerIPTV.com.